check this out. This is probably close to 25 years old right now. This is a Yushio metal halide bulb. New viewers, here's a Tom Reefer studio. Here's the 20 gallon cube mixed reef. Up here we have the 3.5 gallon Pico. And over here is the 5 gallon tall, I like to call it. It's a little more than 5 gallons, closer to 6. And then down here we have the 10 gallon live rock experimental tank which I believe I'm going to convert into a 10 gallon peninsula reef very soon all right hey guys new viewers my name is Tom and my channel is an educational channel we have some fun and I'm trying to instill simplicity and basics in reef keeping so you can have fun and not be so concerned about your numbers, so to speak. Today I'm going to show you my PAR readings in all four of my tanks. The 20 gallon, the 3.5 Pico, the 5 gallon, and the 10 gallon. I believe it's 150 watt, maybe? I had three of these over my 250 gallon mixed reef. Here's the Apogee PAR meter right here, made in USA. I don't use it a lot, but if you want to know exactly what your PAR readings are, it's a good idea to get one. You can rent them. I think BRS rents one, but it all depends. If you really want to know what your PAR reading is, it's good to have one of these. All right, so let's check out these PAR readings in the Pico. What I did is I retrofitted this. These are zip ties, and I took the two off the bottom so it would hang a little. All right, so let's see what we have. In the Pico tank, it's predominantly LPS coral. And if you notice, I only have four in there. I have some Xenia in the back, but my PAR readings here are quite low. So let's take a look at them. Come in here around the Duncan. We're close to 70. See, it's a very sensitive instrument here. It's around 70. Just check the readings out, because when I look away, then I move it. I'm looking as I'm doing this. So when we come out to the side, you can see what it is. I had it at 40 par around the top, which meant the lower ones were probably getting a lot less light. So I thought maybe I could turn it up and see how the corals would react. <laughs> I made my own ballasts. Metal halides were up in the like 400 to 600 to even more range. So I did a little research. I put my own ballast inside this and I had three of these. This is all from Salt Creek. They were in a fish room. Now what you'll notice in my PAR readings in all my tanks is that the light spread is very narrow in my tanks and I've always liked to keep my lights closer to the water to be able to control the PAR a little bit more but when you do that your PAR readings as they go out from the spread get low quite dramatically so you'll see that in quite a few of my tanks here. Alright let's see how this works. Alright so up at the top very top of the tank. There you go, 460, 433. And there's the top. If I come to the side, top side, see how it's reduced? Wow, look at the difference. So in my other video, when we talked about spread, there you go. really low on the sides. The reason why it's a little higher on this side is because I have the Kessel A80 on this. 
All right, so let's drop down. So my feel, that's interesting how it went up as you go down. That's kind of low for these guys. All right, so you can see they're low there, but it doesn't bother me because I don't want them to grow fast anyway. They're healthy. Remember, in a nano, if you're gonna try acros, health has gotta be your main concern, not growth rate. These acros should be higher, although they're performing. See, guys? See what I'm talking about? Now, what am I going to do? Move my whole tank around to give these more par? No, I'm just going to let them go. with LEDs. Look at the size of that. It's gigantic. They still have these. I just don't know where they're using them. They're so hot. They run hot. So see here's the here's the parts that I put together for the bulb. And then I added my cord. So anyway this is my old junk box. Look at this. Alright so over in the five gallon I'm glad to see the Kenya tree is making a comeback. New viewers, it's been almost two months since it's really opened up and I've been trying different things to see what it could be. So in this case, I'm thinking it was the lighting. I've increased the light here to the Kessel's maximum, which has increased the par. So let's take a look at the lighting in the five gallon now. All right, here's the five gallon, guys. Look at that Kenya tree, it came in really nice. It's doing really well now. And it's due to possibly, now I say possibly because I've done two or three things all at the same time. I haven't changed as much water. I've fed a little bit more, but I've also increased the light. I have to forgive my positioning here because I want you to see the par reading. So right now, the Kessel A80 above this is completely maxed. So what do we get there? Right above there, see we're at four. That's at the top of the, whoa, wow, look at that. All right, so it's pretty intense when you get inches away, but if I drop down, there you go. I'm already at around 275 within inches. So, my guess is maybe the Kenya tree needed more light because picture what the bottom is going to be like. If I'm 275 right here, what is it over here? See, 187. This is the top of the Ocelopora here, 175. So it drops rather quick. Let's go down here. All right, 144, and that's 144 down there. Let's come over here by the Kenya tree. See, so that's not a lot of par. Kenya trees are very resilient too. They can take a lot. That's why, so you're at 180, 180s here, and let's go all the way down. I can't even reach without getting my hand a little wet. Okay, this is down towards the bottom. We're at about, uh, look at that, 70, 60. We're down here 70 in the 60 range. The Z is growing just as well. This is another great example, guys. I have the Xenia over in the 20 gallon, right up on the top, 400 and above par, and they're healthy. And I also have them down in the bottom of this five gallon with around 50 or 60 par, and they're doing great in there. That's less than half the light, guys. Way less. All right. So there you go with the 
five gallon. I notice I'm starting to yak too much, guys. Tell me if I'm yakking too much in the comments below. All right, I don't want to get into <sighs> might have perfect numbers and your tank doesn't look that good. It's almost each tank evolves in its own manner, its own way. Not everybody has the same parameters and they have these beautiful tanks. All right, so let's take a quick look at the 10. All right, let's try the 10 gallon now, guys. What I'm gonna do is just shift this, keeping it in the center, but just shifting it so I can get the par meter down in there. Should be the same light. All right, in a 10 gallon, it's not so important, guys. It's still an experimental tank. I'm letting things grow. I have hair algae on the back glass. I'm letting it grow. What I do notice is the coralline has decreased on the live rock. Remember, this was the tank that was hand-collected rock. It wasn't aquacultured. It was hand-collected from different parts of the world. And we were going to see what it would do without doing anything else to it. All right, so let's see what we have when we come in here with this. Now I just changed the light to quite a bit more blue. There you go. So dead center under the light, over 250. All right, so there, I'm, I'm not gonna read them out, guys. It's kind of annoying. Now if I come over here, you're gonna see what a drop, right? This is what I was saying in my other video. If you're using a tank that's more than 18 inches wide, you lose a lot of par way out towards the edge. See that? And here's the scent more towards the center. See how much par you lose when you go out? So this is a 20 inch long tank. So, and I have the light quite close. So there it is. But what I did, the settings on this now are 100% blues. All the blues are 100% on here. High spectral blue will increase your coralline growth quite rapidly. And I lowered the cool white to 30%. And the reason why I did that is I noticed some of the coralline growth was disappearing on this. So I'm going to seed it with a little more coralline from maybe my 20 gallon tank, just a few little pieces, and see if we can get the coralline to grow on these rocks better. All right, guys. I think that should do it for today, right? All right, I'm gonna give you my parting message. Don't worry about your numbers so much. All right, I've shown you today, even with lighting, corals are forgiving. What you do want to remember is if you are going to make a transition in your lighting, whether to increase or decrease it, do it a small amount at a time, very slowly. I'm talking about a period of over a week or two or more. Go slow. So if I want to increase, say, something over here, I'm going to do it very slow. But I'm not going to increase anything, regardless of what the number was down below. I'm going to keep it as it is because they look nice and that's the way it is. All right? All right, have a great rest of the day. I have a lot of good questions coming for Water Change Wednesday, and I'll see you then. Take care now, guys. All right, guys. So, <laughs> all right, guys. All right, guys. So much for par and corals and you might have perfect numbers and a horrible, no. So anyway, my name is Tom, and this is Tom Reefer Channel. <laughs>